Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. I was having the simplest little thing today. My lunch. A sandwich of peanut butter, top it with sliced peaches, and a, on a piece of nice bread. And I stopped to think for a moment. What a miracle. Peanut butter? Some peanut farmer has to, somewhere in the south, has to plant the peanuts, wait for them to, to grow, fertilize it, water it, whatever, to harvest it, put it all on a truck and send it to another company to grind the peanuts and stick it into a container, who then ships it to another company to, I guess, put labels or maybe, you know, not to retail it. And I went to Trader Joe's yesterday to buy a pound of peanut butter. It was two twenty nine, And that's not junked up with sugar and crap, but pure peanut butter. Crunchy, I like it. Now it happened we just finished fresh fruit, fresh peach season, so I opened a can of canned peaches. Even with now with the uh, inflation, it used to be a buck, now it's two bucks. Packed in pure juice, not, not a bunch of sugar crap. Delicious. I drained it so that not even any of that liquid. And two bucks, and again, peach farmer has to plant a tree that takes years for a peach tree to grow until it can bear fruit. And then the miracle, by the way, of having to plant, they have to plant different varieties of peaches together because they have to cross pollinate. And the miracle of the bee pollinating every single one of those. What a miracle that is. Worldwide, every fruit has got to be pollinated. And yet, you know, can't hit the stigmas too hard like a person would if he was trying to pollinate it. But the bee does just the right amount. Miracle. Then the bread. Yeah, I, die, I do buy my bread from a, a French baker I love called La Chitania in, in Lafayette, California. But even if it's just store-bought bread, growing the wheat, harvesting the wheat, grinding the wheat, adding the spices, baking it, and you go to the store and you buy it for three bucks for a pound loaf of bread. Look at that, just that's a stupid little sandwich. Then I was looking out my window. It's not about a piece of glass. You know, it's made out of sand. You could give me ten billion dollars and I couldn't know how to figure out how to make a window out of that. Everyday miracles. Think of another window. I had my teeth cleaned yesterday by my wonderful dentist. I'll give him a plug. Thomas Smithers in Berkeley. I love him. A man of integrity. A different kind of everyday miracle. We were in an era where I hear about dentists upselling. Actually, my previous, I've had Tom for a decade or more now, but before, when my previous dentist died, I went to a new, a new dentist, and all of a sudden, well, I have, normally I have very good teeth. He says, oh, you, need a, you need a crown on this one. I said, oh, okay. And the next year I come back and he says, oh, you need a crown on this one. And before I let him do the second one, I went to Smithers and I said, do I need a crown? No, you don't need a crown at all. He's just bullshitting you. Tom Smithers would never do that. He even does his own teeth cleaning, slowly and patiently, in an era where every dentist is trying to make every, or doctor trying to make every most of every minute. He's slowly, patiently, thoroughly, 50 minutes worth of teeth cleaning and charging a normal amount. Sweet, sweet, wonderful guy. Great conversationalist. Really smart. It's not like he's a marginal dentist. He's not. If you look at his Yelp reviews, they're off the charts. And he's a graduate of UCF Dental School, UCSF Dental School. Very prestigious, so he's a smart guy. He's an everyday miracle. Kind of an old-fashioned guy who was much more about patiently providing quality service at a fair price, no upselling. That's an everyday miracle. Think about maybe somebody you know who does that. They're a hero, an unsung hero, an everyday miracle. And although right now it's still light, I think about it, I can work at night and I do. The light bulb, stupid little light bulb. Even if you buy an LED light bulb or whatever, it's a couple of bucks. And the LED light bulb lasts for thousands of hours. The miracle that there's this thing called electricity that somehow, whether it be from hydroelectric power or coal power or solar power or whatever, brings power to my house so that I can 
play my synthesizer. I can do this YouTube video with you. I can read. I think in the old days they had kerosene lamps that were, you know, probably sure very bad for you. And here is this clean energy in light bulbs. Cost almost nothing. What a, an everyday miracle. This, this, I just flashed for no reason. On this shirt. I mean, again, you can give me $10 million. I couldn't make this shirt. It's a plain old shirt. Cost me, what, $20, $30? I don't know what it is. But it's not even new, and it, it looks fine, even though I probably washed it 20 times. It's a miracle. Making, a, making cloth, turning it into a shirt, just making a button, and then sending it to a retailer or Amazon where you can buy it for 20 30 bucks. What a miracle. Everyday miracle. I said, the, look look at this, this webcam. The micro, I can be able to talk to you. And anywhere you are in the world, from Azerbaijan to Zambia, you can see me, hear me, easily convert it into a, a, a podcast. Or wait for the podcast to be, you know, this thing is going to be converted into a podcast uh, uh, on uh, Apple, iTunes, and uh, Spotify, and Amazon um, Audible. But what a miracle that that can happen. And it's free. You don't have to pay a penny on it, and I don't have to take any advertising at all. This is just me and you, my attempt to share what I do, what I know, what I think, the way I think, for what it's worth. And then you can then, if you like it, you can immediately, in a second, you hit the share button and you're posting it all over your social media to the hundreds or thousands of people who are in your Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or, I guess, Instagram or TikTok. What a miracle is that? And you do that on your iPhone. <laughs> what a miracle is your iPhone? When I was growing up, you had a you could only have a, a wired phone that was connected to your house, and you paid a lot of money per month for just the phone. Compare that with all the apps you can use in, in the iPhone, from a, a flashlight to a camera to a banking app. I, I haven't been in my bank for a million years. I just deposit my checks using the Wells Fargo app. I take a picture of it, and it, it's deposited. Are these not everyday miracles? And of course, those are the unsung heroes, these tech people who quietly in anonymity, really smart people, create this stuff. And of course, Google. You can Google search on me or on electron microscopes or on, on uh, you know, peach growing for free, instantly, and look at, get millions and you're searching essentially 10 libraries of Congress worth of stuff. And you can read it or you can watch it on video for free. Give me a break. Everyday miracle. It was hot today. I just turned off the air conditioner because I didn't want the sound to be. But to think how many people sweltered in heat. And now air conditioning is pretty much ubiquitous. So conversely, heat. How many people for hundreds of years, thousands of years, the invention of fire was this great miracle and they had to sit around the fire or a stove was a, a, a wood burning stove was considered a miracle. And now we have comfortable heat. Amazing. I think about appliances like the air conditioner. I remember, you know, I, here's my coffee. A $30 Mr. Coffee makes great coffee. $30. And then the coffee itself, of course, grown somewhere in Sumatra or in Costa Rica and flown here. And I go to Amazon. I love Amazon's just their medium roast coffee. And for, uh, I think it's 15 bucks for two pounds. I get delicious coffee in the bean, roasted, everything, perfect. And even rainforest certified. Amazing. Fair traded or whatever all the other kitchen appliances. The miracle of a stove, compare that with before refrigeration, uh, uh, before, I mean the refrigerator before refrigeration, or the stove where you can heat up anything you want, the oven, the microwave that heated up this coffee. Not this coffee, this was iced coffee. <laughs> when I wanted it heated up. Running water, the water for coffee. I mean, think of the miracle of reliably safe water that you just have to turn on the tap. These are everyday miracles. Water, I think about the shower. How wonderful I can get hot water 
whenever I want. Comfy all over my body. We take it for granted. What a miracle that water comes from a, some source, gets purified through these wonderful chemical processes or whatever, and then piped to your house. Enough. I think the last thing I want to talk about is uh, uh, a personal uh, thing that I consider a miracle, which is the piano, and maybe especially the electric keyboard. I have a big grand piano downstairs, which has been a, those those you know traditional pianos been around since the I think early 19th century, uh, before right after the harpsichord and the clavichord. But the electronic thing for 500 bucks, 15 years ago. I bought this keyboard that sounds like a good piano and also will play electric piano and harpsichord and uh, chimes and a million other things with what's called a weighted accent keyboard so you can actually play with feeling for $500. And I think I want to end by playing something for you. Um, I can't read music, can't write music, but I can hear music, both the music of others and melodies that go in my head. And three that I uh, have come up with a, f a few months ago was uh, called, I've called to turn it into a suite called Birth, Life, and Death. And I feel like playing death for you today for no good reason. Um, and it's really, it's about two minutes long, and it's about a man, old, first, and it doesn't seem like he's dying, he's just, you know, slowing down a bit. And then it gets slower and slower, and then he dies. Um, I hope you'll enjoy it, and this is, again, the synthesizer in action. Um, I'll play it with traditional piano. I could play with any instrument, but I think it sounds best with traditional piano. So I'm just going to turn all of this over there so you can see this, hopefully. Yeah, I think you can. Uh, here it is, the mic. Yeah. Uh, let's do it this way. Okay, good. This is death. Or dying. I should call it, I guess, dying. It's not just death, it's the dying process.
miracle of the keyboard, and I'm also grateful that I've been given this gift to be able to do that. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments, and especially like it if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. Uh, and would welcome, by the way, you're either in the comment section or emailing me any questions you'd like me to answer. I like, uh, I picked this up from Lex Friedman. He calls it Ask Me Anything. I do love to be asked questions of any sort, and I think usually I have something of interest to say. So you can email me at mnemko, that's M N E M K O, at Comcast.net. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Artie Nemco.